I'm out here in this super abandoned parking lot to take you guys on a tour around my brand new 2022 Subaru Ascent Limited Edition. The Subaru comes in a bunch of different uh, configurations. There's a base model, a premium, uh, an Onyx a Limited, and a Touring Edition. Admittedly, I'm not a car reviewer. I'm not somebody that reviews cars, but I thought uh, for families out there or people just looking for a bigger vehicle, uh, maybe somebody uh, like me who's not a car reviewer can take you guys on a slightly more realistic and honest uh, review around the car. So uh, let's check it out. Like I said, this is a premium model. Um, on ours, we did get the uh, lighted mirror, lighted entry mirrors and uh, seat back covers, uh, utility covers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so we're a family of four. I have all the car seats in and I've brought all my luggage <laughs> to show you guys how useful the trunk space is with all the seats up and car seats in. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. But before we do, if you guys could hit that subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up, it helps other people find my videos and it helps this video uh, reach other people. So yeah, let's get started. Let's take a look around. Let's take a second to talk about the engine and the powertrain in this car. This is a 2.4 liter turbo engine uh, that goes down into the turbo right here. And this is probably the cleanest this engine bay will ever look. But yeah, it's a flat four 2.4 liter turbo. And this is what the under part of the, this is what's under the hood. I actually haven't opened this up since I bought the car. So uh, it is kind of interesting to take a look under here. As far as fuel economy goes, it gets 20 in the city and 26 on the highway with this model. Some of the lower base trims, because I, I think because they have less weight, do achieve up to 27. Um, so yeah, I know uh, right now I'm averaging about 19.5 miles per gallon, uh, which kind of hurts with the way fuel economy is right now. I hope in the future Subaru makes a hybrid powertrain for these cars. Uh, if they can, I don't know if that, you know, I would assume it's possible with all wheel drive. In fact, yeah, there's, there's all wheel drive hybrids out there. So yeah, it should be. All right, let's get started. So coming into the uh, driver's side here, <coughs> we have a uh, typical Subaru steering wheel. You have your uh, cruise control, lane keep assist and lane centering. Uh, these buttons adjust how close you are to the cars in front of you with the cruise control on. And then a little bit further down, you have your skip forward, skip back, volume up and down, voice control for the car, which is kind of terrible. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it never understands me. Uh, change the source of the uh, input, like you can switch between phone, AM, FM, XM, uh, call, uh, hang up, and uh, answer. And then down here, you have a set of buttons that control the uh, center screen there. Uh, which tells you the uh, tire pressure, your speed, fuel economy, um, lane departure. Uh, it gives you a whole bunch of information. So uh, yeah, then you have uh, two displays in the center here. This one up here, you can cycle through and it gives you things like fuel economy, what track is playing, uh, a compass, weather for the area you're in, uh, your, uh, how much of the gas pedal you're using, fuel economy, average speed. This one tells you the status of the drivetrain, uh, shows you, uh, what wheels are active and how far you've tilted the steering wheel. Uh, this one tells you the status of the various systems on board. And then, uh, you get a date and time. There's a whole bunch of different things and I know you can customize the heck out of that menu. Then down here, you have your main uh, infotainment screen. Uh, I gotta say, this screen is miles above what was in my 2016 Legacy that I have, or had. Uh, so you get the My Subaru Media, which connects to your phone, radio, which does Sirius XM, AM, FM. Uh, we're gonna pause that so we don't get a copyright violation or just turn it off, there we go. Uh, Subaru Starlink, and then if you go to apps, you also get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, I have no idea what Travel Link is, Pandora, which I don't know why you wouldn't just run it through your phone. Uh, but yeah, so one downside to this system is for CarPlay and Android Auto, um, there is no wireless Apple CarPlay. You have to use the, um, 
cable down here. You have to plug into one of these two. You do get an aux port. These little covers over the front, I'm pretty sure they're gonna get broken over time, but they seem pretty solid right now, so that's always a good thing. And then uh, in the bottom here, you get a little cubby hole where I've stored my keys. Uh, X mode, uh, auto vehicle hill hold, which is pretty cool. Like if you're on a hill, it'll hold the brakes for you. You get your standard shifter, which I really like because in some of the other cars we test drove, like the Honda, uh, we test drove a Honda Pilot, I think it was. Uh, not a Pilot, sorry. The Honda, uh, whatever Honda's minivan is, the name escapes me at the moment. But instead of a shifter, a traditional shifter, it had a set of buttons to push. And I really hate that. Like, I don't know, call me a traditionalist. And then over here uh, is the passenger side. You get a lot of uh, a lot of room. Like it, nobody that sat up there has been uh, clustered or felt confined. And the leather on these seats is really nice. It feels really good. My dog has already gotten hair all over them. Uh, the seats are comfortable. They're very nice. Right now they're a little firm, which I'm going to go ahead and blame on the car being new. Uh, sorry about the beeping. I got it. Ah, all right, there we go. Nope. All right. We're going to get out of here, uh, which I blame on the car being new. Uh, but overall, the seats are very comfortable, not as comfortable as my wife's Honda CRV, uh, but they're very, they're very cozy. So like I mentioned earlier, we are a family of four. We have two children, a one-year-old and a two-year-old, soon to be three. Uh, she's already gotten her feet all over the brand new leather. So pro tip, if you're buying a car with a family, don't expect it to stay new for very long. Uh, you get a ton of room down there, but yeah, these seats are back as far as they go, which, uh, is one thing for accessing the third row. You're not going to be able to have both car seats in here. <clears throat> You'll have to take out a car seat and put it in the third row or plan on taking the car seat in and out every time, which is kind of a bummer, but I feel like it'll be manageable if we put one of them in the third row. So with the car seats up, you still have a lot of room in the center there to uh, navigate around. In this model car, both of the car seats, or both of the seats in the back are heated and cooled, and it's controlled with this center console right here. So you get some outlets back here to charge your phone. They are just standard uh, USB-A ports. Uh, but yeah, back here you get temperature controls for the overhead heating and cooling and uh, access to control the heated seats in the back. If you want ventilated seats, uh, you have to move up to the Touring model, which is kind of a bummer, but you know, it's not that big of a deal. I didn't feel it was something I absolutely had to have. And then overhead, um, you do get access to control the um, vents up here. And uh, our model, because we stepped up to the because we stepped up to the uh, lighted mirrors and the rear seat covers, we also got upgraded to the LED interior lighting, uh, which is phenomenal. It's really bright. It makes the inside of the car really easy to see what you're doing at night. And most of the models that have the technology package, like this car, come with the double-sized uh, double sized moonroof, which is just beautiful. It makes the inside of the car so much more cheery and light. Another really nice feature of the Subaru Ascent is the second row on most models uh, most of the higher models anyway, come with these built-in sunshades, uh, like you saw on the other window in the back there. And they're just really convenient because they cover the entire window, unlike some of the third-party ones you can buy online that don't seem to cover the entire window. Uh, like we have one in my wife's car and I feel like it doesn't fully cover. But, but yeah, these are built in. They cover everything really nice. On a bright sunny day like today, especially in the summer, I think they would come in really handy. And this model car, uh, I should point out, also has Harman Kardon audio, uh, which is really great. There's like 16 speakers in this car, and the music just sounds really good. Like, I never have to turn the music up very high to get a full, you know, a full feeling, really loud sound for it. All right, coming around to the trunk here, this model, because again, that it is in a, a limited model, has a uh, full power lift gate and you can adjust how high it goes. You can even lock the doors from the rear here, which is really, really nice. And then coming down here to the back, this is the capacity. This is what it looks like with all of the seats, uh, with the third row seats down. And if I didn't have car seats, you can also fold flat the second row, which gives you a ton of cargo room. 
not quite as much as like a minivan or a full-sized SUV, but I feel like I'm not going to have a problem with the amount of space there is back here. And again, as you can see, my dog has been all over the car already, <laughs> and uh, there's nothing I can do about it. But like I was mentioning earlier, this trim that we got came with a package. Uh, it was like a $2,000 add-on that came with seat back protectors. It came with the LED lights that I mentioned, um, LED lights and uh, the upgraded mirrors. So let's do a little experiment. I have here all of the luggage and my camera gear that we would take typically take on a vacation with us. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys how the third row goes up, which basically you pull up, <clears throat> grab the other strap here, and you pull up. And then there's one more strap on the top here you can pull to pull the seats back a little bit further if you wanna recline them, which I don't know anybody that would sit in the third row without the seats reclined. So here's what your trunk space looks like with the third row up. It's not much, but let's do a little experiment like I said, we're gonna take this luggage and see if we can make it fit in this third row. All right, so first things first, I've got two small suitcases. Let's throw these in the trunk and see how it looks. All right, so not bad. Those fit back there pretty good. Now I've got a giant suitcase. Let's see if we can make this guy Let's see if we can make this guy fit without a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that may not uh, that may not let the trunk close like that. Let's let's try a different way. Let's try putting the big guy in first. Yeah, uh, right there is the latch to close the trunk. That's not gonna fit like that. Let's try turning it up. All right, yeah, it might, it might close like that. But then how do I get my little guys in? Let's try that. And spoiler alert, I will be buying a toolie for the roof. So if this doesn't work out, don't think it's the end of the car because it's not. <laughs> Yeah, no. Yeah, not going to work. You're going to need a toolie if you buy this car with kids and people in the third row, the third row of seating. So yeah, you can get one little guy and one big guy, but the second little guy is not going to fit. Now, one thing you could try doing is putting this guy between the two captain's chairs in the middle, but that's not exactly safe and not exactly convenient because then you have to keep taking it in and out. So that was one thing I thought of, but yeah, if you get this car, you're gonna want a toolie for it. With the third row down, this is what the trunk situation looks like. You have a plethora of trunk space. It is totally plenty. Uh, so if you're traveling with a group of four, you're absolutely fine. But if you're traveling with seven, now you're driving a four passenger car instead of a seven. So definitely gonna need that toolie. Uh, but yeah, with the third row down, you've got trunk space for days, baby. It is, it is huge. And speaking of the Thule, this car does have really high and nice looking uh, and very sturdy feeling uh, metal roof racks uh, to attach crossbars and a Thule to as well. So uh, yeah. All right, guys, welcome aboard. I'm gonna take you guys on a little bit of a drive in the car now. Uh, the car does have a built-in uh, navigation system in this model. And then you have your uh, home button, radio, map, apps. It is kind of nice, in my opinion, that the car still does have physical buttons. One thing I hate to do when I'm driving is fiddle around with a touch screen, especially a car touch screen. They're always, they're never quite as good as a phone or a tablet. Um, <clears throat> And then down here, you have your automatic uh, heating and cooling control. Sync synchronizes the passenger side and the back. 
you get the mode which adjusts uh, where the airflow is going, uh, basically. Uh, rear controls, rear on off, and then uh, air conditioning and passenger side control, and then a bunch of buttons down here to control everything from the uh, heating to the front, ventilation, air conditioning. Uh, right now, we're just gonna put it on automatic full so that I don't really have to do any uh, controls. And uh, let's go for a drive. Let's take it for a trip. One thing I will say about this car is that you don't have to push on the gas pedal very much at all. Uh, this thing seems very eager to roll forward all the time. So uh, yeah, very, very little gas to control how fast the car is going. Uh, not much juice is needed at all. Like right now I'm barely, I barely pushed the gas pedal and I already had enough juice to get up and out of that parking lot. So uh, yeah, let's take it for a trip. As far as ride feel goes, it is a fairly large feeling vehicle. Not as big as a full sized SUV, but it, you know, it feels pretty big. It's pretty large. Uh, and so the car has a turbo, like I showed you guys earlier, and the turbo seems to kick in above 2,500 RPM. So you really notice it, <coughs> pardon me. You really notice the turbo above 2,500 RPMs, especially when you, uh, you know, if you give it some gas, like merging onto a highway or something like that, this thing takes off like a rocket, man. Uh, I had no problem overtaking somebody in the passing lane when I was driving the other day. Uh, the person was going pretty slow, so I just uh, I just hopped up on the gas pedal and it, it took right off, so no issue there. All right, so we're turning on to uh, my town's main street, and let's give it a little bit of gas and see what happens. Whoa, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty crazy. Uh, the whole front end of the car lifted right up with the tur when the turbo kicked on. Uh, not terrible, nothing crazy that I'd be concerned about, but it did have some pickup to the front of the car, uh, and yeah. The other thing I will say about driving this car is the eyesight for the car uh, is incredible. When you're on the highway, uh, it kind of feels like the car is driving itself. Uh, it keeps itself nice and centered in the lane, sometimes even better than I could, uh, and it uh, watches out for the car ahead of you. Like when you turn the eyesight on, it puts it up on that center display there, and it'll actually show you the position of the cars ahead of you, and it'll show you that the car is getting closer or further away. So that's a really neat feature as well. I don't know how well it'll translate into the video, but we're going about 30 miles an hour. So let's just take a minute and listen to uh, the sounds from the car itself as it's driving and the road noise. Uh, and I'll tell you, it's not much, but yeah, let's take a minute of silence and just listen to the road noise. Uh, now keep in mind the air con uh, heating and air system is on. So there's a little bit of background noise from that, but not a crazy amount. Yeah, so not much at all. Uh, I would say it's pretty quiet. And on the highway too, I've noticed that it's fairly silent when you're driving. Uh, unless the pavement you're on is real bumpy or rough, uh, there's not a whole lot of noise to be heard or had. Um, and you know, these are all my observations driving this car uh, that now has 750 miles on it, 749. Uh, so I have about a thousand miles of drive in and it's uh, it's been pretty great driving. Overall, very, very comfortable, very uh, easy drive. So yeah, uh, thanks for coming along on our trip and uh, our little trip. And uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss future videos. Thanks a lot.